We're here in the beautiful Amsterdam at Money 2020, it's Dutch Blockchain Week and we meet interesting people like Lasse from MakerDAO, how are you doing? Good, thanks, how are you? Alright, yeah, doing fine. It's a big event, uh, lots of centralized uh, big companies here and, and now we see this decentralized technology uh, project, uh, MakerDAO, w why are you here? Yeah, so for us it's really showing the face of Maker to the established financial industry. Um, Maker has a very good traction in the uh, DApp space and the DeFi space and so on. And now we're looking more and more into uh, also establishing ourselves uh, with uh, payment companies, brokers, exchanges, uh, banks in the traditional space. All right. And, and what's, what's your story, for instance, when you, when you speak to a payment provider, what, what, what do you tell about Maker? So, of course, the primary product of Maker is uh, our DAI stablecoin. Um, and for payment companies, it's, of course, extremely interesting that you can have something of a stable, predictable value that you can send uh, anywhere in the world in uh, seconds. Uh, with about one dollar cent in, in fees and in a quite uh, transparent system that allows you to uh, perform your or uh, comply with regulatory uh, requirements uh, quite easily. Uh, so those are some of the, the points that we raise. Mm. And what, 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 are, what are the questions raised? I mean, uh, for instance, uh, how many transactions per second or what, what are the questions that are uh, raised? Yeah, so uh, uh, of course uh, a, a lot of uh, people have heard about the uh, scalability issues that Ethereum and other chains have, have experienced. Um, but we, we, we in Maker, we actually have a POC of uh, um, a system using DAI that can be running at above 1,000 transactions per, per second. Um, uh, so as, as, we, as we mature this uh, technology, uh, we're quite confident that, that, that we can also handle uh, uh, quite large uh, payment volumes. Um, and of course the, the volatility issues is always something that people in traditional finance um, sort of associate with, with blockchains and then of course we're, we're happy to introduce, uh, introduce DAI to, to them. All right. And there are also some developments in the blockchain space itself. I mean, for me MakerDAO was also like, uh, yeah, associated with Ethereum, uh, ERC20 token, but now you're also working together with EOS for instance. You're planning to work with EOS? Well, we're, I would say we're, we're blockchain agnostic at Maker. Mm. Uh, so we're definitely considering other blockchains for, uh, for our DAI stablecoin. I think our philosophy is that wherever there is um, adoption of the blockchain, wherever there is an uptake in the development of, of dApps, then we also want DAI to be available there for use in, 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 in dApps and other applications. Um, and of course EOS is one of the big blockchains, so it's definitely on our radar. Hmm. And what, what are the next challenges for, 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 uh, yeah, for MakerDAO? Um, I mean, yeah, there were some, some things going on in the foundation. Is that something you can comment on? or? Um, no, so I'm not specifically sure what what you're um, what you're referring to, but um, generally, you know, we have the foundation in Maker. Uh, we have our MKR uh, uh, governance structure with the MKR token holders, um, and what I think has been really um, interesting to see is how MKR governance has adapted to the recent. Uh, 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 need for raising the stability fees, which I think MKR governance has handled beautifully. Um, so, seventeen point five percent. Yeah, and about half a year ago, it was around one percent, I think. Um, so MKR governance saw this need for raising the stability fee, and the MKR governance responded as as it should, uh, in a in a rational manner. And the result is that the price of DAI has remained very close to, to one dollar. So I think that has been a, a very positive experience. Mm. Yeah, but maybe also for the wider public, uh, perhaps you can actually, it's a loan platform in a sense. Eh? I mean, you can use Ethereum as a collateral uh, in the governance model of, 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 uh, of, of make it out. Perhaps you can explain it a little bit better than, uh, than I. Yeah, so... 
our primary product is, is DAI, right, yeah. the stablecoin. And then the question is, how is, how is DAI issued? And that's where our, our very important but perhaps secondary focus comes into, into the picture um, with our DAI credit system. Um, and that's where um, people can deposit collateral such as ETH, which is the only collateral you can use currently. Uh, but uh, later this year we'll be launching multi-collateral uh, DAI, so you can deposit other kinds of uh, digital tokens, including tokenized uh, real-world assets. So you deposit that into our smart contract system as collateral, and based on this value, you can then um, uh, draw DAI uh, to get liquidity uh, very quickly, and um, we expect it to be much cheaper than how you can uh, loan stuff against other collateral. collateral. And, and as a holder of uh, DAI, do you get some interest or...? Uh, so yeah, we're going to introduce the DAI savings rate. Uh, so that means if you, hold, uh, if you hold DAI in your account, you can lock them in savings mode. And this will uh, give you a part of the stability fees that is paid by the people who um, deposit collateral and draw DAI against it. So the CDP owners will pay a fee that goes partially to MKR token holders as the... Uh, uh, as, as a compensation for their participation in the governance mechanism, mm -hmm. but the other part of the fee will go to uh, to die holders as a savings rate. Oh, right, right, right. So, so is there? So, I mean, of course, there's some overlap between uh, MKR and, uh, and 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 die holders, or um, I'm sure there's some overlap in the in the user base, but really the functions of these uses is uh, is is very separate and it's very different. Uh, so DAI holders can use DAI as any regular currency for payments, for savings, for receiving a salary, for making money transfers to other countries. Um, and just using DAI, you don't need to know anything about CDPs or MKR governance and so on. It's just a regular currency. Um, but if you're an MKR token owner, um, then you're assuming the responsibility of participating in the governance mechanism of the system. So. You, you'll be responsible for making decisions on which types of collateral can go into the system, what should be the risk parameters on these collateral types, which includes what stability fees should we pay, what is the liquidation ratio, um, what is the liquidation penalty, and what is the debt ceiling for this specific collateral type. So for each type of collateral, there will be a system-wide ceiling on how much die can be drawn against this specific uh, collateral. Okay. Um, and if there's a black swan event where many types of collateral will drop in value at once very quickly and the system cannot act quickly enough to liquidate these CDPs, then MKR token holders act as a backstop where the system will issue more MKR and sell them on the market to cover the, um, the deficit in the system uh, uh, because of this black swan event. So. Um, for instance, like a 51% 50, attack, what, what has happened to Ethereum Classic, for example? Is that possible? I mean, So you mean if more than 51% of MKR tokens are, uh, are held by one person, for instance? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I, I think the answer can be split up in two parts. One is that it's very unlikely to happen because every time you buy one more MKR, you will, you're likely to pay a, a, a higher price. Because it's, it's supply and demand, right? So your price, the, the price of the MKR you're buying will probably rise exponentially as you're buying more and more. So buying 51% is probably almost impossible. But then if it happens and there is a, you could say an attack on the system by this 51% holder, uh, then the system can be redeployed and the remaining MKR token holders can decide to ban this uh, actor which they see as malicious. So this is... If this happens, this is going to be an annoying user experience uh, for people who uh, have DAI um, because the system will be redeployed, mm -hmm. but it's in no way the end of the system it, because it will uh, rise again where this bad actor has been removed and then you, ha then you can uh, convert your old DAI into DAI from the new system. Uh, two questions. I mean, uh, what what are you looking for? I mean, you you have a business to business approach, but also perhaps a business to small businesses uh, use die for merchants, for instance. 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, well, one of the things we're we're looking at is getting uh, Dai adopted more in the in the payment space, um, and there are really two approaches to this. You could say one is approaching uh, payment service providers um, that can use Dai as another payment method in addition to the credit cards and so on that they're already processing, um, and and then you can also go directly to uh, to merchants. Um, and uh, we're, we're doing both, so uh, I'm looking forward to, to die be, for you to be able to spend Dai in, in even more, more places. Yeah, for instance, the partnership with a credit car, card company, is that one of the options as well? Or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and another type of uh, small business that, that can come into the picture here is, is companies that need liquidity from their invoices. Um, so when you issue an invoice and you get a 30-day payment, for instance, it can be very attractive if you can deposit this invoice into a CDP and maker and then draw instant liquidity from it. Um, Factoring. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so I, I think that's going to happen uh, on, on a few different different platforms and I think that's that can get really huge. All right. We always end with a personal question. What are your favorite three crypto projects? Oh, if, uh, I can say Maker as one of them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and uh, then I think uh, Augur is really interesting. Uh, Sorry? Augur. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, um, and they also have, um, I th and I think there's also going to be a, a collaboration between Augur and, and, and Maker there. Um, oh, yeah? Um, <laughs> Can you tell something about it? Well, I, I, I think they already announced um, that they're um, planning to use Dai in, uh, in Augur. Um, uh, which will just remove the ETH volatility whenever you make bets on Augur. Um, and, um, and then I'm a co-founder of Coinify. Uh, we started Coinify in 2014 as a, as a payment platform and uh, digital currency uh, broker. Um, so that's, of course, my, my third favorite project. All right. Thank you very much, Lasse, for your time. All the best with all the projects uh, you're busy with. Yeah, thank you, too.